Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of Furman Football Weekly with head coach Clay Hendricks. Paladins are coming off of another road victory, this time 27-21 at Sanford, ranked third in the new coaches poll and fourth in the media poll heading into this week's matchup at Western Carolina. And we'll talk more about that as we go through. Joining Coach Clay Hendricks today are uh, Luke Clark and Luke Shipley. And uh, we'll ask Coach to make uh, an opening statement and then let Scott Keeler ask question number one. Ken, I appreciate you being here. Uh, actually just came off the practice field. We're on fall break today and tomorrow. So we actually are, we got back late Saturday, gave our guys yesterday off and then we came back this morning and kind of wrapped up the Sanford game and pushed on to get ready for Western Carolina. But certainly happy to get a win over Birmingham and uh, really proud of our team toughness our group showed throughout the game. Knew it was going to be a four quarter game and it was and uh, just again really proud of uh, you know how, how our kids played, how hard we played and uh, did a lot of really good things. Certainly a lot of things we still got to clean up and still think our best football is out there in front of us. And, this is certainly be a good week for it to show up if we can if we can put it all together. But uh, you have a great week prep for a really really talented, good uh, all around you know football team, in West Carolina. And you'll take our very best effort to go up there and even have a chance. So, but with that, any questions you may have, Coach? Uh, it was noticeable on offense on Saturday the amount of chunk plays you got. Was that a combination of you know something y'all really been working on, some samples giving you? A little bit of both. Speak to the uh, amount of big plays you have on offense. I guess as a, the best answer might be yes. Uh, I mean, it's something we've, we've worked out. I felt like we've, you know, we're certainly counting nothing too bad. And, but I, I know we had four pretty explosive runs so in the passing game. And, uh, you know, it kind of takes everybody, but that certainly was a big part of that game. Uh, I, you know, it's a typical game for us that they did some things differently. It seems like this every week we get something different. A little bit, some, some little different changes of defense, and even some, you know, we saw some stuff we saw last year, even on the playoffs show up in that game, some stuff we had seen. So, um, but now that's something we want to continue to get better at playing a team this week that really has a lot of them. Uh, it's kind of really how they live, and uh, you know, so hopefully it's something we build upon. Our guys have confidence enough to do it, and uh, so hopefully, again, yeah, there'll be something we build on. It's good this game isn't being played on paper because their numbers are pretty impressive there. I think the point differential in every common, <coughs> here, common game has favored them. The two teams give up roughly the same amount of yards, but they gain a good deal more. What are uh, intangible fair lot of them? Turnover differential is one of the things that they don't have it as well. But uh, how do you contain that much? Well, I think anytime you try to compare scores, and I tell our guys all the time, comparison is the, the thief of joy. You know, just try to compare scores. Each game's different, each matchup's a little bit different. I mean, they'll tell you that Sanford set the locker room for five hours up there with score 14 7. And Chris tell me a little bit about just that experience the other day, you know. And so, uh, you know, East Kentucky has to drop them, winning touchdown. I mean, that guy catches it 10 out of 10 times at the end of the game. So just, you know, we got a couple games could have certainly gone the other way, you know. So, you know, it's about preparation. Uh, certainly they're a team that is really, really explosive. Their running backs is as good as I think we've seen here in a long time. Uh, they're good up front. They're athletic. Quarterback's playing at a high level. They've got talented wide receivers. So really, and they're, they got a scheme that's going to spread you out. They, they certainly run it and throw it. And then they're playing really well on defense. So, uh, you know, key for us is just do what we do. Uh, go have a great week of prep, and uh, you know, again, we've been playing really good defense. And I, I don't know what Sanford was averaging before last week. I think they got substantially less than what they've been averaging. Uh, you know, and that, that, that really takes a little bit. Everybody in Texas doing a good job offensively, and certainly things we do defensively. So, uh, again, just want to stop play on paper. And I think we'll still line up and go play. It's funny we. I don't think I told our team this morning. I don't think we're weird or in that range. I think we're still kind of seeing the underdog. So that's okay. We kind of like that. And, uh, you know, we, we're a bunch. That, like I said, we are who we are. And, you know, we're not going to go out talent. We certainly are not going out talent West Carolina. We're not. Uh, and as I always say, we have talent, but we got to go be exceptional in execution. 
toughness and keep doing those things. It has been a good winning formula for us, and that's what we'll have to do on Saturday. Uh, Luke, as far as the defense goes, what's your thoughts going into this game with uh, Western Carolina scored as much as they have in the last three games? Yeah, um, obviously very explosive offense. I mean, we got to be kind of just a unit this game. I don't think there's much difference in terms of you know preparation. We prepare the same for every opponent. Prepare very well. So really just trying to iron out the chinks in our armor, you know, just to make sure we're playing as a unit out there. Just stay in with Luke Clark for a moment. Um, when I talked to Dwayne Vaughn, defensive coordinator last week, he was talking about every game that we have played this season, opponents are getting the ball out less than two and a half seconds. So that doesn't give you a whole lot of time to sack the quarterback. And that's Sanford's game plan, and yet you sacked him nine times. What was the difference in that game as maybe opposed to the previous four or five games? Yeah, for sure. Um, definitely hard to get sacks when the ball's coming out that fast. But, you know, we, we did some different things schematically. You know, with our, our DBs played a lot better. And, you know, when we take away that first look and make Sanford pretty one-dimensional, I mean, they rushed for under 50 yards. So make them one-dimensional, make them have to drop back. It's giving us a lot more time to let our pass rush get there. You know, I don't think it's necessarily that we were rushing so much better this week than other weeks. It's just, you know, we had time to get there once, which is really nice. And Coach, that's what you told me in the pregame. You want to make them one-dimensional and not let them pop those running plays they did against us here last year. Well, I, I think one of the keys was, you know, the tempo is such a part of what Sanford does offensively. And I, I really think tempo was a non-factor in the game. And credit, credit, you know, Dwayne and his staff and these guys. And, I, and I, we don't take it for granted. I thought our, our scout group did this phenomenal job we've ever seen. In fact, our guys felt like they went faster than what they were seeing. And you look like, I think they kind of abandoned the, the tempo stuff later, maybe trying to get better calls in later in the game. But, uh, you know, so I, each week's a little different. I think that this bunch is a little different. I would say they don't tempo, but they're probably a little, like they're a little more trying to get, get the right call. Um, but, but again, you know, in this bunch, you're not going to, you know, you know like I said, they're back. It's, they, like I said, they're, 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 they block well, they got a good scheme. He's really, really, really good one of those situations. He makes, he's the back that makes a lot sometimes when there's not a lot there. Uh, so I, this week will be a little bit different, even though they, they want to run. You know, I think people think they just want to throw it around, and I think they probably do, but they want to run the football, and they've done a really good job of it. Uh, Coach, uh, just looking at their, uh, what kind of pops off to me about some of their stats, not just the typical, but their rush defense this year, because I know the last two years y'all played, Dom's had pretty big days. And um, just what do you see differently in the way they defend the run this year? Well, you know, then it goes back a little bit comparison. They are clearly better defensively. I mean, now they're three years into the system. I think it's maybe the coordinator's second year. A lot of those guys are the same players, so they're better. You know, again, I just think a lot of it goes to the matchups. You know, when you look at some of us, and you're giving up the passing yards. But if you play people, throw the ball really well. I mean, you know, I don't know who the best run offense they've seen. You know, I don't know. They've certainly seen people run the ball. So, again, it's I just think it, each week's a little bit different, you know, in how you match up. And, but now they're, but they're talented, again, good scheme. And I just think they're better. Uh, they're better. And I don't know. I think some other people are, have always been playing from behind. If you're playing from behind, you're probably not running it a whole lot. Uh, but, uh, but, yeah, I mean, their stats are what they are. This is the first time I remember having to specify Luke's, Luke Shifley. One thing that's common between Western Carolina and Vermont is the fact that both teams have a very diverse group of receivers. Sorry about that. Western Carolina has eight receivers with 10 or more catches, and y'all have seven with 10 or more catches. Everybody always wants these guys like, you know, Tyreek Hills get 12. But how. Y'all must be very happy. I mean, like sharing the wealth, and it must be. It's obviously very successful, but it must be. Uh, how, how do you how do you guys feel about all that? Yeah, I think I'm pretty sure we had seven or eight receivers actually play the first <coughs> quarter of the game last week. Um, we're just a very unselfish group, very close knit uh, family in that room over there, and Dusty's done a great job of you know telling us just to do our job, and big plays will come for everybody. Um, you know we. We all have group chats. We all talk to each other all the time. We're pulling for each other. 
every single play. So I just think the brotherhood in that room is probably as close to it as compared to anybody else in the country. Coach, uh, going into this game, how is the health of the team uh, as we as we stand right now? With this being probably one of the biggest games right now of the season, based on the records. Yeah, you know we did lose Luke Pettit. Luke Pettit will be out the rest of the year. He'll have to have surgery on an ankle, uh, which is a big, big loss. You know, I hate to lose. He you know, missed all of last year with a knee injury. He was playing really well for us this year. We have have played a bunch of guys at that spot. You know, we've you know because the coaches hold three or four guys at that spot. But certainly hate that to lose. Um, you know, and I think uh, Blake Hurley came in the other day played the majority of all the snaps in the second half. Uh, you know, Josh practiced this morning. You know, after the heat he took the other day, I, no reason he won't be ready to go. And uh, actually, uh, Kendall Thomas practiced some this morning. Uh, so we'll see how his week kind of progresses. But really, I think not bad. Other otherwise, you know, we had the, a couple of previous ones guys are out. Now, you know, you know, Grant Robson. Can we get him back in a few weeks? I don't know. You know, uh, we'll, we'll see. But uh, overall, not bad. I think everybody's banged up. You know, this time of the year. And, yeah. Uh, I think a, there are a lot of guys playing on a lot of football teams that are banged up, uh, not 100%. We're certainly one of those two. It comes down to the old saying, there's a difference between being hurt and being injured, right? Yeah, yeah. Especially in our sport, you know. Uh, if you don't, if you're not, and if you don't feel it's something, then you, you probably not be playing very hard. So I, I think that's pretty, you know, pretty common factor for us. For both of the players, the, the string of conference wins going back to last year is now what, 10. The regular season road wins. I mean, th this team has become something of uh, road warriors. How do you develop that mentality? What, what, what has gone into that success playing away from Powell in the stadium? Luke, since you're staring at me, Luke Clark, I'll start with you. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, going on the road and winning is no easy task for sure. And I think that really something like that, you know, going on the road just comes back to toughness. And something we talk about a lot is the culture of this team. And, you know, we feel like wherever we go, wherever we play, you know, it's the same thing playing at home. You know, like we're, we're a band of brothers and wherever we go, we play as a unit. And, you know, going into enemy territory is the most fun thing to do is go get a win, you know. So I think, you know, that winning on the road ties into our culture a lot. Like you said, you know, going on the road is pretty hard, but even since last year, we've had a bunch of close games that we found a way to win at the very end. I think just the confidence we have going into the fourth quarter, wearing on people the whole time, I think we're very, very confident to close out games. So um, actually, I kind of like playing on the road. It's it's just the people you're around all the time. There's not outside distractions, and it's just, it's actually kind of more fun going in on the road and winning, so. Look the other day, Sanford, uh, well, Second half, you guys you got three and out starts. Every goes down scores, get to 17 14. So they got all the momentum, and then the next play, you get a 48 yarder. Um, and then I think two plays later, you drop one for 13 from Tom to the rest. Um, it seemed like every time Sanford got made it that one score game, you guys had an answer. And can you just speak to um, that in that play in particular? Because 17 14 did way through the third quarter, that's kind of a different game. And, to come back with that kind of play in the next, like he kind of take it through that play and, and uh, that drive it, 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 itself. Yeah, well, I'll start off with Coach Jasmine. He always tells us, you know, if they go down there and score, just keep doing your job. Coach Roper has the next play mentality, but on that play specifically, for, they, they always had a three high safety look essentially the whole game. Um, the safety was outside leverage with me and the backer kind of came down in the box. So my eyes got pretty big once the ball was snapped, but it was just a simple five-step slant route, essentially, and just a lot of room. Up gave me a good ball, and it was a big play. Luke, apparently, perhaps 10 sacks after the previous uh, early part of the season was all about getting turnovers, but there wasn't, there, there weren't that many sacks. What changed against Sam? Was it more what y'all changed, or what they were, how they were different? I don't necessarily think much changed. I just think, you know, finally showed up. You know, we, we finally put it together, really. And, you know, we didn't have a turnover last night, or yesterday not after the game, but, you know, Gilby dropped a pretty easy one that we'd like to come up with. So, you know, we, we know how to force turnovers. We know how to get up the quarterback. We've always been good at it. And I think this game just, we just put it together. And, uh, I think any other game it could have shown up 
But this game, we just played it better as a defense and as a group, really. Had a lot more guys doing their job and more worried about doing their job. Coach, uh, kind of going back to the, uh, the health of the team, um, what does it say about Furman that you've got so many great players on this team that can step right in when someone gets injured and it's like you don't, you don't, you know, you, you just don't stop. You just keep on going and it's just like you got the players that you need to be in the right spot no matter what happens. Well, I think it speaks, speaks for, you know, the job our, our assistant coaches have done just from a player development standpoint, you know, what Andre does in the weight room. You know, certainly we've talked about retention around here. Guys want to be a part of the program. The numbers are a little higher. Kids that had the ability to come back, came back, want to be a part of what we're doing. Uh, but, but again, I, you know, we played a lot of guys. I look, I think we've got 12 guys with sacks this year, about 12 different guys. Uh, we're building an unselfish group. You know, I think a lot of them feel like they know we're better. You know, uh, you know the old saying, when you got one, you got none. And so, you know, we've always tried to build, you know, develop depth here. And that's been, you know, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Um, you know, so again, just goes back to them and, and, you know, retaining guys, developing guys. We're that kind of program that has to do that, you know. And we plug in a guy here and there through, through transfer. You know, we're playing another group this week that has a lot of transfers. Uh, you know, and I, that's just not going to work for us here. It's just not going to work at our school, you know. And uh, it creates challenges. But also there's a lot of positive that come in that. And, and, and we haven't had to play a lot of young guys. You know, and, and again, because we've been, we've been able to retain our old guys, and I think right now we're still playing three freshmen, kind of only playing played two last year. Uh, and, and, and again, really proud of that young group that's doing a phenomenal job on the book teams. There are a bunch of those guys, and, and these next few games, you're going to see a few names pop up there, probably you haven't seen. They're going to jump in on special teams and do things because we can use the, the four game rule. And then we also got the blanket waiver people. Get in the playoffs, those games don't count now. You can, you can play those guys. So, and that's certainly that's certainly our goal going forward. But uh, we're just trying to focus on one game at a time right now. Clay, the the loop on your left uh, a moment ago referenced winning close games. We're talking about being on the road. Uh, just interested from your standpoint about what goes into developing that mentality because you can go back a couple of years and we lost some close games and. But then starting after Sanford last year, seemingly every time this team has been in one and needed to do something to make a play to win the game, you've been able to do it. How do you develop that mentality? Well, you know, he said it, and Luke, Luke said it, you know, I think the toughness aspect of it, you know, and I think, I think just, and that's physically and mentally. And I just think it probably speaks just consistency, you know, just, I, I do think on the road, so much of it's just about consistency and, and getting great effort all the time, you know, and if you do the little things well enough, long enough, it's going to pay off for you. Uh, I think our conditioning aspect of it has been, has been a phenomenal job Andre's done. Um, you know, we're really confident in the fourth quarter. Um, you know, I no, so can't say we've always played our best there, but I, I felt like we get a little stronger as teams go on, as games go on. And I, I don't know how the sack total came out, but obviously at the end of that game, uh, you know, one of the things we wanted to do the other day was – uh, maybe we hadn't finished the game, hadn't finished the half quite like we wanted to on defense, but you know, they accused you the other day, got the turn, uh, got stopped before the half, we went down and scored. Almost the exact same situation we practiced last Wednesday on two minutes. It was about a you know, forty yard, you know, going the other direction. So I yeah, I think just consistency and you know, consistent effort and then I, I do think that just the physical mental toughness aspect of it's a big part of it. And that's the, through training, uh, that doesn't just happen. Uh, and then when you have any success, you know, you build upon it. Uh, Coach, on about the hotel Saturday night, you turned on ESPN and there's Furman on the top place. <laughs> so we probably need to ask about that. But uh, I actually want to ask you about Matt Ferguson's hands in general and what he's brought to the table this year and obviously that play on Saturday. Well, good. I think, uh, <coughs> you know, it's interesting. You know, we recruit Ben and, and uh, Ben's high school coach's son played for me at the Air Force Academy. Woodlands, Texas, which drives out of Houston. It was later in the group year, and we were looking for a receiver. And, uh, there's a guy by the name of Danny Amendola who played the same high school. And all through the process, he was comparing him to him. You know, so we know he had this young man him. And, and uh, it's funny, Ben, ben probably played a year ago, and I'm not sure Ben was quite ready for that. He was a little bit hurt as a freshman. Uh, but man, he's had, he had a phenomenal spring, August. 
there's probably some argue, but if, if, if I had to bet or lay my money on the best hand on the team, it's probably going to be him. Uh, and I will say this: I, I turned, you know, that that whole sequence was kind of odd because you know we had the timeouts. We probably didn't use one of them well because we had a little bit of a personnel issue at the time, and then and then you know, we, we got the penalty, you know, which created more downs, but you didn't have time. And then you know we knew we could run one play. Didn't really think, you know, run at you, you're gonna, we felt like we need to get points. And I think the only thing I said to Justin was, throw it to number three, I think he's probably got a pretty good chance of catching it, you know. Uh, now, did I, but I, I see him make, I can't say a kid like that, but I see him do a lot of things like that in practice, just hands wise. And, uh, boy, you know, he made a number of other big catches too. So, uh, no, he's been a, not surprised, but really I just think he's that guy from your one year too. From watching this tape, one of my theories has been that you guys hang around this place so long because you like it. And it fits you. I just wonder for both of y'all, how, when you look way back when you decided to come here, what made you decide to come? And how does it match up to what you expect? Yeah, so I actually transferred here after my freshman year. I was in Middle Tennessee, um, complete polar opposite kind of program from this. It's a good program, but coming here was definitely, uh, it's been very beneficial for me, and I've been really grateful for Coach Hendricks even letting me come. Um, just the, academically, athletically, it's pretty unmatched. You got the Stanfords and the, you know, the Ellis Barbers, those schools, but down here, football's a big deal. Academics are a big deal. Um, you know, our fan base actually really, really cares about the football team as well. I think two weeks ago against the Citadel, we had roughly 13,000 people show up. Um, it's just been good. Um, and all, like last year, we had a bunch of seniors come back. You know, it was really hard to say no to not come back. It's just, I think we all had one mining goal was to get a ring this year. And you know, some of us may come back next year, so we'll see. But. Yeah, I'm a little bit different than Luke. Uh, I was kind of recruited more out of high school uh, when I was official visit here and committed. Uh, some of that stuff stood out to me was just, you know, talk about the quality of the coaches we have, Coach Hendricks, Coach Vaughn, those guys. Just really like, when I when, you, when I got here, like, it just stood out that something's different about this team. You know, campus is beautiful. People care about you here and like want you to actually grow as a person. And you go to a lot of these schools and they just want you to be a football player. You talk about wanting to be a Furman man and Grow into someone who's going to be successful. It's the place to be, and I knew that once I was committed here. Uh, Luke uh, Cole Gonzalez is a uh, quite a passer, and he's had some great games. What's your thoughts going into this game that you're going to have to be in order to keep him under control in that pocket? Yeah, I, um, just to be the same player we all are. You know, uh, obviously efficient quarterback, efficient offense. You know, we're not going to sit here and ignore the facts, very explosive team. I think our main goal is to you know, just play our brand of football, eliminate explosives, get the ball on the ground, tackle well, you know, probably need to tackle a little bit better. Had a lot of missed tackles, including myself against Sanford. So, you know, getting that back on the ground, you need to get just catch tackle, you know, can't let them get a lot of yards after catch. You know, they have a great quarterback, they have a great O-line, but, you know, nothing changes. We, we can get after that bunch, and I know we can. So that's the plan, get after them. Clay, at the football media days, I, I talked to, to Kerwin Bell and told him that we were probably the only two people in the room that remembered him from his uh, Orlando Thunder days in, in the old World League. I was covering that was a writer when he played in, in those lime green fluorescent jerseys. But I was just wondering, uh, do you have any history with, with Kerwin Bell at all before he got here to Western? Yeah, I really don't, other than you know, we're kind of in similar time frames there. I remember this player, and I really did. You know, I've, I've certainly observed him from a distance. He's been really successful, particularly, you know, offensively. That, that's kind of how he's made his name. They're where he's been, and, and certainly, you know, it's hard to look see what he's done, he's done there in a short period of time. You know, this bunch, you know, somebody asked me about that. I said, they've always been really athletic. They've always been. They've had some really good teams. And, uh, you know, so I guess another one of those groups, I guess this is my, maybe my 31st meeting, because I think we played twice one year. Uh, so I played a lot of games against them. They've always been, you know, they've always had talent. 
uh, but, but again, you know, it's pretty easy to look and see what they've done, you know, and, and playing with a lot of confidence. And I think sometimes when you have a, you know, they got a, you know, seen last year, all the co big conference games were at the end of the year. You know, this year, you know, they had a big win against Sandra, maybe week two, you know, and I think sometimes you do that, you get a little confidence and they're playing with a lot of confidence. And, you know, certainly, I mean, I think he comes across as that kind of guy, you know, and I'm sure they, they get it from him. Uh, you know, but no, he's, he's certainly been good everywhere he's been. Uh, but Shiflet, uh, you did start both Tennessee, but it sure seems like you've been here longer than anybody else. Um, can you tell me about being, I guess it's the second, I mean, you played receiver your entire time here, but you had that quarterback thing, you had some injuries, um, you decided on the year on the COVID thing and everything. Um, how, how satisfying is it for your for your final year here to be in that set role of the receiver? And I also noticed just kind of the team mentality. You guys talked about, I think, you and Jacon Smith this year scored a touchdown, and on the next play on the kickoff return, y'all made the tackle. Um, is that something you enjoy? Do you enjoy being a part of that team too, especially after you just go catch touchdown? All right, you go back out there and make the tackle. Um, can you just speak to the, the whole experience of this final year for you? Yeah, I actually think that was Nick Cannon that scored oh, with that sweep and then right. made the tackle. But yeah, this I think you've been tackle before. <laughs> it's been really exciting. You've been really, um, you know, just fulfilling. Um, it's just, it's hard to not want to come back to this program and the people you're around. Like Luke said, you know, the coaching staff, all the players you're around. It's it's rewarding. It's, it's exciting. Everyone, you know, looks forward to practice every day. You know, the weeks have been flying by, so I kind of want to slow down a little bit. But, you know, it's... I definitely would like to come back if I got the opportunity to again, so. Clay, you got a big rivalry with Siddle, they're down. You got a big rivalry with Walker, they're down. You got a rivalry with Sanford, you just did because they won the conference last year. But when you were here, the most bitter rival was probably Western Carolina. And after many years in between, if you reach that, I mean, right now, there's a good chance of you're of another big rival for Furman being Western because they're not that far away. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I tell our team all the time, we seem to kind of get everybody's best shot. Um, you talked about these teams being there, and I said, yeah, I think they probably are until they play us. I mean, they, they seem to play a little better. But uh, I don't know, it was fun to, fun to be a part of that. Um, yeah, I mean, those were some big games when I was here. They were really talented, had some really good players. We had some had some big games with them as we have over the years, you know, a number of times, and uh, certainly with proximity. And, uh, you know, I think anytime, you know, I think our league's better when West Carolina's good. You know, I, I, I you know, I don't, I don't know. If, uh, I, I think our whole league's good when everybody's pretty good. Uh, but, but certainly, uh, you know, there'll be a, there'll be a, it'll be a fun environment for us to go play in. I know when they've had success, they've supported. Support them done well, and uh, I expect that to be no different. Uh, but no, it'll. Uh, yeah, it, 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 this will be a, this will be an interesting interesting matchup. It's it's kind of fun. Again, I, I I could probably name you know two hands there. You know certain games over the years. You know a couple of civil games we played here. You know now a lot of the Georgia Southern Appalachian and Marshall, and they a couple of walk games. But you know this certainly got a chance to be one of those kind of games. Any other questions from the room? Final thought, Coach, before we wrap it up. No, we just need to have a great week of prep. Again, uh, again, cool, big, big challenge ahead of us, but I think it's certainly what we're looking forward to. And, uh, we just got to go be, go be firm. And, and, uh, and again, I know our kids will have a great week of prep. Our staff will do a great job getting our guys in a position where they can go be successful, but you got to go, got to go get it done on Saturday. And uh, we'll go up there. And, uh, I have no doubt our kids will, our kids will play it out on the line, and hopefully we can execute well enough to give ourselves a chance to go get a win. Well, depending on which poll you're looking at, it's either going to be a top 10 or a top 15 matchup uh, in call a week. Kickoff is at 2.30. It will be uh, available via ESPN+. Plus. Uh, of course, we invite you to watch it if you're not going to make the trip. Turn down the sound and check out the radio broadcast. We'll begin with a Pepsi countdown to kickoff on the uh, – Van Wagner Ingalls Furman Radio Network beginning at 1 p.m. That's 97.7 FM in Greenville, 
in Spartanburg by the Van Upstate and everywhere on the Odyssey app. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Coach Clay Hendricks, Luke Clark, Luke Shiflett, for your time today. And uh, we look forward to a Saturday in Cullowee, as my dad, friend Daniel Hooker likes to call it, the battle for purple supremacy as these two teams get together at 2.30 p.m. Until then, I'm Dan Scott saying God bless you. So long, everybody. This has been a Hunter Reed Jeff Shed